So as far as the arterial supply of the testes is concerned, we know that the testes are developing here in the lumbar region close to the kidneys. Okay, so here is our abdominal aorta. So when the t testes are developing, they are dragging their blood supply directly from the abdominal aorta, that is the testicular artery. Okay, the, the, the testicular artery, as the testes are descending down, it will be like dragged along with the testes down to the scrotum, passing through the inguinal canal. And while doing so, the testicular artery is going to cross the ureter. These are the ureters. They will be crossed anteriorly by the testicular artery. Okay, so once the artery reaches the inguinal canal, it enters the canal and it traverses through the spermatic cord, which is one of the contents of the canal. And then it is following the, the ductus difference down. And here, in this model, we can see that the testicular artery is descending along with the vas. Oh, vas is climbing up, and the artery is descending down. And, and, and then it reaches the testes and actually divides into many branches, forming uh, the tunica vasculosa I just talked about. That's the layer surrounding the testes. So that's the testicular artery, which is a di direct branch from the abdominal aorta. And uh, at this point, I would say that the, there is some collateral circulation that is also available for the testes. That Remember that I talked about the artery of ductus difference. That is a branch from the internal iliac artery. There is an internal iliac artery, and that gives off a branch that is the artery of ductus difference. That artery is, is anastomosing with the testicular artery. So there is like one source is the artery of ductus difference, which is a branch of the internal iliac. And then there is another source. Remember, there is a cremaster muscle lying in the, like, uh, like, like covering the testes. So there is an artery of cremaster muscle or cremastric artery that has been given off by the external iliac. So we have three sources of blood supply to the testes. It's the direct branch from the abdominal aorta, which is the main testicular artery. Then we have collaterals, one from the internal iliac as the artery of ductus difference, and the other is the external iliac, from the external iliac uh, as the artery of cremaster muscle or cremastric artery. So what's the significance of all this? That during a surgery, perform, like if you perform a surgery on testes, you can easily ligate without any issues. You can ligate the testicular artery because the testis already is having a lot of circulation or like a collateral blood supply, which is already there. So you can clamp the testicular artery with ease. This one? Yes, okay. Better? Okay, good. So as far as the venous drainage of the testes is concerned, so from the tunica vasculosa, that network surrounding uh, of blood vessels surrounding the testes. So uh, that is known as the pampiniform plexus, okay? The small veins, like eight to 20 veins, will form this plexus, which is present mainly in the spermatic cord and it's surrounding the testicular artery, okay? And through this pampiniform plexus, uh, they would be emerging uh, right and left testicular veins that would be going up, up towards the inferior vena cava, which I will show you in the other model in a minute. But we have to understand that these are the valveless small veins. And uh, sometimes what happens, there is a congestion uh, of the pampiniform plexus that will give rise to varicose seal and mostly it's involving the left testes. So the varicose seal in 90% of cases is on the left side, and I'll tell you why. Before that, uh, what is the function of the pampiniform plexus other than draining the testes? It's also a part of the thermal regulatory system of the testes. Remember I talked about the cremaster muscle and the dartos muscle, they, what they were doing, they were pulling up the testes 
from the scrotal sac up towards close to the body cavity, body wall in cases of cool temperature or like cooler temperatures. So what happens in when there is a like high temperature? So this uh, pampiniform plexus, which is around the, like a mesh, it's surrounding the testicular artery in the spermatic cord. It, it actually maintains the temperature of the testis at a constant level uh, by, you know, uh, regulating the temperature of the blood inside the uh, artery. It's surrounding the artery and, um, you know, there is a heat scape. So it's cooling down the blood, which is running into the, uh, the uh, testicular artery. Okay, so you just have to remember that the pampiniform plexus, other than draining the testes, it's also performing a thermal regulatory role. Okay, why I just talked about the varicocele, which is present mostly in 90% cases, it's m present on the left side. I have to show, show you where the testicular veins are draining. And uh, that varicocele on, on examination, uh, it, the, the scrotal sac, will give uh, like a feeling of a bag full of worms because of those varicosities, the enlarged uh, veins of the pampiniform plexus, okay? Now, the testicular vein is following the pathway of the testicular artery. The, only the artery is descending down towards the scrotum and towards the testes. The, the vein would be climbing up, up towards the inguinal canal. Now, I have to show you, as we know that the uh, the, testi the testes were developing in the lumbar region, so their venous drainage is also up to this level. So the testicular vein climbs up, passes through the inguinal canal, this, like the spermatic cord, emerges out of the inguinal canal at the deep inguinal ring, and then it climbs up and drains on the right side, it is draining directly into the inferior vena cava, which is, you know, that the inferior vena cava is slightly on the right side of the vertebral column or the median, uh, like mid sagittal line. Okay, so the right testicular vein is dumping its blood directly into the inferior vena cava. While on the left side, if you look at the left side, so again it's climbing uh, through the inguinal canal, emerging at the deep inguinal ring, and then from there on it climbs up towards the abdominal cavity, crosses like it's it's climbing beside the ureter and then it dumps its blood into the left renal vein, not into the inferior vena cava. The, the left testicular vein is dumping the blood into left renal vein, which will dump it along with the kidney blood into the inferior vena cava. So why, when I said that the varicocele is mostly, 90% of cases is present on the left side, because um, like in case of a malignant tumor on the left side, in, on left kidney, that would be compressing over the renal vein, and there would be venous congestion. So uh, you can imagine that there would be a back pooling of venous blood into the testicular vein, and back down, it would be leading to the engorgement of, you know, uh, the, uh, or enlargement of the pampiniform plexus. Uh, by the way, uh, if it persists, the varicocele, if it persists, it will lead to infertility, okay? Another condition that can occur is the testicular torsion. That is the result of the rotation of testis about or around the spermatic cord. And that leads to the strangulation of the testicular artery. And that's, by the way, it's a medical emergency because once the testicular artery gets, you know, strangled, it, there would be ischemic necrosis of the testes within six hours of its torsion. So it's a medical emergency. 